The time has arrived. The Dell XPS 15 9570 versus the Razer Blade 15. Ooh, look how good this looks. So I have talked quite a bit already about the Dell XPS 15. So I'm gonna start out with the Razer Blade, but by the end of the video, I'm gonna let you know which computer, which laptop is my new go-to because I live here in New York City. I got a beast of a machine back there for when I'm here but I travel a lot. Hashtag dongle life is what first got me curious about switching to one of these laptops. And I hope some of my findings will help you choose as well. Shout out to Intel for sponsoring this video. They have been along with me this entire journey. It wouldn't have been possible reviewing all of these laptops, going through the endless possibilities. And this is where we found ourselves. I really think the modern day creator is always on the go. So having that premium mobility, having a lot of power in this very thin case is a big deal. Intel drives innovations with companies like HP, Razer, Dell to make a gaming laptop that, hey, isn't bulky and ugly. This is a good looking computer. For me, I am a video creator first. So the processor, RAM, and then graphics card is what's important to me. Both of these machines have the powerful eighth generation Intel Core i7-8750H processor. Now, I, again, I say those numbers in that letter because that means you've got a speedy laptop. Okay, so here we go. This video is going to be kind of talky, but I feel like it's what you've, you've been waiting for. Both of these computers are the 4K models. These screens are gorgeous. So a 3840 by 2160 display, 60 hertz refresh rate, and the fact that it's a touch screen is just cherry on top of everything. These are very similar in terms of specs, but the biggest difference is the graphics card. On the Blade, you have a GTX 1070, and on the Dell XPS, you have a 1050 Ti. So maybe that's to blame for the steep price tag. The 1070 is about double the price of the 1050, but the Razer Blade 15, the model I have, the 4K at 60 hertz, is $2,899, oh, which is like getting towards MacBook territory, but you're still getting so much power, especially when it comes to gaming with that graphics card. But then the Dell XPS 159570, well, I paid $1,949. So you're talking about almost a thousand dollar difference here. If you're looking at either of these laptops, I'm assuming that video content creation is a part of your workflow at some point. And if you're using Adobe Premiere, this is when the NVIDIA graphics cards comes in handy. You've got to use those CUDA cores. Going into the Premiere settings and changing it to CUDA instead of OpenCL or the other option is going to make the difference of editing a video in three to four minutes or 15 to 16. So <laughs> a little pro tip, change that. In terms of exporting performance, I exported a normal 12 minute video with color grading and there is some green screen action in there and they actually exported in very similar export times. Now this is when the laptops were both unplugged from power sources. It seemed like the razor blade wasn't using the CPU to its fullest potential. However, when the power sources were plugged in, the time was dramatically decreased and the razor blade came out on top. I double checked so many settings, but it seems like no matter what laptop I've had traditionally, just it's going to be better when it has a power source plugged in. Best performance was dragged all the way up on both machines, um, but if you have any personal pro tips on how to utilize your machine to its fullest potential, even when it's not plugged in, let me know. But I think that's one of those things that just, it's just like how it is. When I'm at the airport or I'm out of town in a hotel, I usually leave my laptop plugged in anyway, so it's not that big of a deal. And again, Again, the razor blade came out on top. Here's another example of an hour long podcast that I exported and it doesn't have any color grading or really any effects to utilize that GPU acceleration um, and the razor blade came out on top with that one as well. As you can see, there's more of a difference with longer content with exports. When you're exporting like 12 minute videos, they're not that different. Well, hey, this is a gaming laptop. It's really supposed to be the first beautiful, thin gaming laptop. And it did really well. I was playing Overwatch in 4K at ultra mode and it was so smooth getting 60 to 70 frames per second. Now I will mention I did the same thing on my Dell XPS, even though it's not a gaming laptop, it actually still held up 
pretty well. But hey, hey, you're a, you're a content creator. You wanna record, you wanna stream. So I opened up OBS and I was feeling kinda gutsy, you know? Let's play in 4K and let's also record in 4K. I did change the settings to high instead of ultra, but the gameplay was still pretty smooth. Of course, the frames per second dropped uh, quite a bit, but it was still playable. The gameplay on the Razer was, again, a little bit, a little bit better than the Dell XPS. And both of the recordings actually turned out pretty choppy, but the gameplay on both was fine. But you know, who's streaming and playing games at 4K on a laptop? I think that's still a very ambitious goal. But hey, you can play 4K games effortlessly. It's going to be beautiful without any hesitation on here. But then when it comes to recording and streaming, just doing straight up 1080 is going to be your best option and this won't give you problems. Okay, so right now they're still kind of like neck and neck in, in my brain, but let me tell you the reasons why the Razer Blade 15 might stand out. It's missing an SD card slot uh, that is in the Dell XPS 15. However, when it comes to gaming laptops, peripherals, that's, that's important. So mice, microphone, those usually plug in with USB type A. And the Razer Blade 15 has three of those. However, on top of that, it has a USB-C, a mini display port, and an HDMI. That USB-C is also Thunderbolt 3 compatible. So what that means is you can actually take your laptop and run three different displays at the same time as having a microphone and a mice and another thing plugged into your USB. So the port situation on this guy, mm, yes. And then if you're using it as a gaming laptop and also at home, maybe you don't have a huge desktop, that's when it's really gonna come in handy because it makes sense to use that as something that you plug into a bigger display and then you have a desktop set up at your home. Also, when you're on the go, it has the full arrow keys. I don't know why the Dell XPS still has those d the little arrow keys. I don't, I don't like the little arrow keys. And then also the camera is on top. So if you wanna stream on the go, I've done a lot of like uh, premiere streaming on YouTube, that's gonna come in handy because that, that XPS camera that looks up your nose you're not gonna wanna use that. So, what is my conclusion? How long have I been uh, talking here? Like 20 minutes, I'm sorry. I think the Razer Blade 15 is a great computer and having that 4K option really makes it a possibility for the more content creator type people like me. However, the $2,800 price tag seems too steep for what you get for someone who isn't a gamer. So where I see the Razer Blade 15 fitting is if you are a gamer and a content creator, but a gamer first, get that 1080p model with 144 hertz refresh rate and then the 1070 graphics card. It's going to be cheaper and you're gonna get all of the ports for the peripherals and pretty much everything that you need. And you will have a powerful gaming laptop that is also super powerful in Premiere. It's great for your home setup, it's great for traveling, and boom, it's a winner all around. And again, shout out to Intel because their eighth generation Intel Core i7 processor is at the center of this and can handle super heavy tasks and also multitask in between creative applications like the Adobe Premiere, Photoshop, Lightroom, and also OBS for streaming and recording. And those six cores really take advantage of multi-threaded creative applications. So both of these laptops are thin and powerful but which one am I going to choose? So the Dell XPS 15 9570 is officially my go-to travel companion every day laptop and I'll tell you why. The biggest thing is I am not a gamer first and I think that's Razer's intention is really to cater to the gaming community and it also doubles as a really good creative laptop but if you are a creator first. First of all, this thing is so much cheaper and you get that 4K screen, the display is beautiful. You can take that extra money you save and upgrade the memory, upgrade the storage. You literally just unscrew these screws and do it yourself and it's pretty cheap. I already talked about this laptop quite a bit in a previous video, but these are the things that got me to stay. The ease of logging in with fingerprint ID, the very, very smooth surface of this kind of carbon fiber, whatever you call it, what, what do they call it? The trackpad is so comfy and the click is very satisfying. I would say it's closest to the MacBook Pro if that's what you're used to. After using the Razer trackpad for an entire day, my wrist actually hurt quite a bit because you have to press down harder in order to get a click. And yes, I understand you, you can just tap 
to click, but when you're having to hold things down in Premiere or moving around Windows, you're going to have to do that hard press. But then again, if you're using the Razer and you're gaming, you're gonna be using a separate mouse anyways. When I'm cramped on the plane and I don't have room for a mouse, that's when this good trackpad is gonna come in handy. The render times weren't different enough for me to hop over to the Razer Blade, although I will say when I was exporting multiple files and kicking them off to Media Encoder, this thing was just like, churning through it, but this is already so much better than what I'm used to that the comfort of also having an SD slot, oh, I can't even talk anymore, an SD card slot, I mean, that is huge. Again, dongle life is what brought me over to this side, and so when I travel, I want absolutely everything that I need, and the fact that I don't have to take out anything. I don't have to take out an SD card reader. Like what I had to do um, with this one when I'm on the plane, when I'm in the hotel, it just makes it so easy. This is all I need. Oh, and one more thing. The battery life isn't the best when you're doing super heavy applications. I was getting an average of four to five hours on this guy, and it, this one was maxing out at about three hours. However, I find myself with the plug more times than not. So again, it's just weighing your options. Are you a gamer? Are you a video creator? Are you streaming on the go a lot? Do you need that camera up top? Do you need the full arrow keys? Oh, somebody, you know, the perfect laptop doesn't exist, but these, these are getting pretty darn close. And listen, I know I talk so much in this video, but I felt like I just needed to get it all out and it's going to be exciting just to confidently, you know, switch over to this laptop and just move on with my life until um, another laptop comes along that I want to review. But again, Intel, thank you so much for sponsoring this video. If you want to check out other laptops like this that punch a lot of power in a very small package make sure to check out the link in the description below oh and guys we did it we've been uh, reviewing a lot of computers over here i might take a break for a couple months but then again you know this has been fun so maybe i'll check out some more stuff down the line but we'll have to see let me know if you like this video hit that subscribe button down below if you're new around here become a part of the peachy fam and if you guys missed it recently i did brandathon 2019 and we just got super creative and meta up in here so make sure to check out that as well in the description below and until next time stay peachy okay bye